अंग्रेज अपना लगान और न्यूज लॉन्ड्री अपना हफ्ता कभी नहीं छोड़ते वेलकम टू हफ्ता वेन वी आर रिकॉर्डिंग ऑन वेडनसडे एट फोर थर्टी इन द आफ्टरनून एंड दिस इज बिकॉज टमोरो इज अ वेरी बिजी डे फॉर अ वेराइटी ऑफ रीजन मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंटली बिकॉज आर मैनेजिंग एडिटर मनीष शाह इज बैक फ्रॉम अ हॉलीडे हेलो विद अ हैट प्लीज नोटिस एज हु शरद Yadav or Mulayam Singh who had said Parkati what was that remember that whole thing who i forget Mulayam Singh Mulayam Singh. no no i think it was Sharad Yadav Sharad Yadav was it Parkati mahila ha Parkati he had said <laughs> basically he had a problem with women who have haircuts ah. so <laughs> is what i gathered but uh, so she's back and uh, but it has been Manisha a very hectic week of news i don't know whether yeah. you've been following news or during holidays do you disconnect well yeah i really wanted to disconnect but then there's so much too tempting yeah it was just <laughs> the arrest especially kejriwal's arrest i think was was hard to not read on it and follow right. what was happening so manisha is back also in the studio i trinchiv aman kripal welcome Hello. raman sir and joining us on uh, the zoom connection is dr ashwarya rao welcome dr rao hi So uh, you are a public health consultant and pediatrician. Uh, you have also been a Kar- Karnatak Carnatic. I don't know how you pronounce this because many people say Carnatic, but I'm thinking they're giving an accent. Carnatic. I say Carnatic <laughs> because that sounds very Indian, Karnatic. but I don't know what. Karnatic. Karnatic. No? So it sounds very Punjabi. Karnatic. So. Karnatic. Karnatic, Karnatic cafe. Is doing well there. We know Karnatic, Karnatic cafe in Delhi. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, she's a producer with ma- multiple albums that she's produced, and she's also the founder of the not-for-profit Better World Shelter for Women. with disabilities so uh, thank you for coming and thank you for all the work you do it's my pleasure to be on your show great uh now we will get into the headlines and then discuss something that has you know it just started off with what i thought was a small disagreement but it's ex- exploded into you know really big mainstream news which is sm krish uh, w- w- which is dm krishna's um you know award. award that he was given and we will get a little more An understanding of it because opposition to that award yeah my understanding on this is limited so dr rao can tell us a little more about that and what is the significance etc uh but i'll start off with the appeal that a election fund which the news minute and news laundry will jointly be covering two of the projects have been topped up so thank you so much for that really appreciate it because the second project got topped up last weekend i'm hoping that at least two more can get topped up this weekend and if you go to the news laundry uh, app or if you go to the news laundry website you will see there is a button called election fund and in that there are three budgets given four budgets given one is another election show where manisha uh, atul, atul and, and dhanya will be traveling and giving you on ground reports and you know the buzz of what's happening with local journalists that's a very popular show because usually it's just journalists sitting in delhi telling us what's happening they they go to the city and get local journalists to tell us Then there's one project called Gendered Polls, which is 47 crore women are eligible to vote in this general election, and they'll possibly outnumber their male counterparts in elections to come. Modi's return hinges on that vote, uh, so we'll be doing several reports and analysis on that. Then ground reports from battleground states, which is Bihar, Bengal, Maharashtra, uh, and Karnataka. and poll watch dogs which is big ads you know what the media's role has been in this so i'm hoping you guys stop it up while i'm recording this it is the media watch dog which is most close to being topped up and the one that's furthest is the one on battleground states so please do contribute because we don't take any ads and there's one thing that the electoral bond story has taught us which raman sir's team supriya's team at scroll and dhanya's team at news minute did such a fantastic job on there could not be a clearer quid pro quo big corporations are taking loans from banks you know defaulting on their loans and giving money to political, political parties. parties it is bizarre the kind of stuff that's happening someone is getting a contract for infrastructure you know project for 2000 crores and giving a couple of 100 crores to the ruling party it is just bizarre and this is in an environment where even news is being funded by these very corporations so unless you fund news you know there's no point in claiming that we are this democracy with very robust institutions because news is one of the most important aspects of a democracy and that is completely hijacked by government ads and those who are giving money to the governments and to news then what's left and so, the nuisance team tells me that there has been no debate on this 
most of the prominent prime time anchors Haan, have no not debate. done shows on electoral Obviously bonds. They are, the they are, they are debating. Uh, we did two stories on. They are debating yes. a tweet about Kangana Ranaut. Yes. Yeah, imagine <laughs> that 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 has taken in one night six prime time debates, but the obvious quid pro quo that is shown in these bonds, no the one took it up. The only discussions that. They say did happen was on DMK. How much money DMK? Yeah. <laughs> so that was one. So do contribute. Uh, so thank you so much. Hafta continues to be free for a couple of weeks. I'm not sure whether it's going to be free this week also. Uh, so do contribute. Uh, with that, Manisha will give us the headlines, and then she will continue with the discussion with Dr. Rao. Aam Aadmi Party Chief and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal was arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in connection to the Delhi Excise Policy case. Following his arrest, Delhi Minister Atishi said Kejriwal will continue to remain the Chief Minister. There's been some kind of controversy around that, whether he should continue or not. His wife, meanwhile, has given two press conferences. They are legally uh, weighing it yeah. whether he can be or he cannot be. But in the meanwhile, uh, you know, he's given two instructions from the jail. But now we have two Chief Ministers in jail: Hemant Sorain yes. and Arvind Kejriwal. The Election Commission on of India on Thursday published the complete electoral bond data given to it by the State Bank of India on orders of the Supreme Court. This included bond numbers that helped donors to be matched with the political parties they donated to. BRS leader K Kavita was taken to Tihar jail after a Delhi court on Tuesday sent her to judicial custody till April 9th in connection with the Delhi excise policy linked money laundering case. In fact, in the electoral bond stories, I read one story that we did that one of the approvers had also donated to ah, the BJP. Yes. In the Delhi yes, excise yes, policy case, yes. climate activist Sonam Wangchuk has ended his fast in lay after 21 days. The protest was aimed at demanding inclusion of Ladakh in the sixth schedule of the constitution and statehood for the region. The fast, though, has not ended. Uh, mm. It's the first phase of the fast, yeah. and now women uh, will for protest and fast for ten days. Yeah, for ten days, yeah. yeah. Carnatic singer TM Krishna is being conferred with the prestigious Sangeeta Kala Nidhi title by the Madras Music Academy at its 2024 conference this sparked a sort of a controversy two musicians Rajni Ga- and Gayatri have resolved to boycott the conference in protest uh, of Krishna who's a vocal critic of Sang Parivar in their letter they wrote that you know how he's demeaned our tradition he's said anti brahmin stuff he's eulogize periyar and stuff like that then the academy also shot back a letter saying that we stand by our resolve mm. to so we can have a longer discussion on this now lots of 2024 election related stories the bjp released its fifth list of candidates for the upcoming lok sabha election justice abhijit gangopadhyay who resigned from the calcutta high court and joined the bjp has been quickly given a party ticket from tamluk constituency in west bengal mm. kangna ranaut's long audition to become the <laughs> member of parliament finally Campaign. born <laughs> finally she's got the role Take of her lifetime she's going to be contesting from mandi in fact um, it's interesting the graphic that Ash- akash banerji deshbhakt put out of her last 10 films and the box of his collection yeah they all tanked so, <laughs> now clearly election is a good uh, it, politics is a good option and now. there's been a lot of controversy around that also because uh, supriya shrinet of congress and brinal pandey who's a senior journalist made some comments about her and mandi mm. which were pretty unsavory to my mind but that became quite a bit of news but, Now, but we must clarify that she claims that it was not the ofi- cuz uh, it wasn't her it was the official congress handle it was and her she, official handle but yeah, she says that her team members, members did, and some heads team. have rolled within her team right. and they delete she deleted it hmm. so navin jindal is going to be contesting from kurukshetra he's joined the bjp that was quick very difficult times for sudhir choudhury <laughs> Kerala BJP president K Surendran will be the party candidate against Rahul Gandhi in Wayanad constituency. Meanwhile, Menaka Gandhi will continue to contest elections from Sultanpur. Her son Varun Gandhi has been dropped from Pilibit. The Congress has also announced more candidates. Uh, they fielded UP Congress president Ajay Rai from Varanasi to contest against Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Rajya Sabha MP Digvijay Singh has been fielded from Rajgarh and former BSP leader Danish Ali from Amroha. The Karnataka government on Saturday moved the Supreme Court alleging that the center had not extended financial assistance to the state for drought management. And there's a lot of center versus state headlines. After this we've had the Kerala government moving the Supreme Court against President Murmu for withholding assent to state bills. And in Tamil Nadu, Governor Arun Ravi finally had to listen to the Supreme Court and administer oath to K Ponmudi as state minister. This was a day after Chief Justice of India 
Justice Chandrachur slammed him for defying the Supreme Court. Fact, he he said, was given 24 hours. Yeah, otherwise he said he'll be forced to ah. put contempt. This, Ravi is one of the most bizarre. Brazen. Yeah, shameless <laughs> governors. I mean, shameless. Even by the low standards that governors have set historically. Candidates from left groups on Sunday swept the Jawaharlal Nehru University Student Union election with the United Left winning three posts and Birsa Ambedkar Phule Students Association emerging victorious on one seat. Now the the this woman who won general secretary she uh, is uh, fighting on uh, you know uh, different party uh, I mean student party and uh, they their candidate was dropped the left party yeah candidate. so left parties they decided to you know back, back her. her because and their candidate was dropped at some like two in the morning or something like yeah. when they were just yeah a, a few hours left for the yes yes but the funny thing is that some of our wonderful news channels. We're running tickers that, you know, ABVP sweeps JNU before general election. Is this, uh, is, is, is this the, what Char Sopar looks like, etc, etc. They won by huge margin. And it, they didn't even in one seat. You know, our news channels have just gone insane. It's no. like, they'll just run anything. See, in, in, a, in a poll where you have just 3,000 votes and you win by 900 votes, it's a huge margin. Mm, 900 yeah. is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. A day after the center notified a fact-checking unit under the Press Information Bureau to identify fake news about the government, the Supreme Court stayed the operation of the notification. This will be until the Bombay High Court takes a final decision on petitions challenging the 2023 amendment to the IT rules. And the biggest the problem with this is that the government will decide yeah. who is telling the truth about their own policies. So <laughs> technically the fact-checking and because of the history of this whole PIB fact-check yeah. and news has done a story... Uh-huh. They pillow anything. Anything to inconvenient is fake, basically. Mm. And Kunal Kamra was one of the key petitioners yeah. in this. No? Over 130 people were killed in Moscow on Friday after gunmen opened fire inside a concert hall with automatic weapons. Terrorist organization Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. But Putin is saying no, it's Ukraine is involved. They're saying no, we've done it. No, 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 no you have it. Ukraine is involved. <laughs> so that's what the news is. Uh, now coming to what's happening in the world of Carnatic music. Uh, Dr. Rao, could you just tell us, A, what is the controversy about, you know, the history of this organization which is conferring the award? And is it, you know, s- such a big political issue uh, in in the, wor- in the world of uh, Carnatic music? Or is it just noise because of some people who want to ingratiate themselves in front of the right-wing government or whatever it's, it is? I think the latter is true. It is not a big deal at all. You know, for a long time, the uh, the controversy erupted like 10 days ago. And uh, like Manisha just briefed what it was about. No, but I'll go into a little bit more detail. Uh, initially, we from the fringes, you know, what we were just watching. It, it is an intra-Brahmin uh, musician, uh, you know, uh, rivalry. Not rivalry. It is a, you know, a dispute between two groups within the thing. Mm. One who... Uh, are, you know, holding on to the hegemony, those who don't want progress, those who don't want to share Carnatic music with anyone, you know, who keep it away from the common man. Uh, That's one group. And the other group, you know, whose leading voice has been TM Krishna over the years. He wants to take Carnatic music, uh, you know, to the common masses so that everyone can enjoy. So now coming to the history of the Music Academy, it was set up, you know, uh, in 1927. It was part of some uh, big uh, uh, Congress uh, conference. At the conference, there were some deliberations and recommendations, and they said, we have to propagate Carnatic music. So they set it up. It, it started in halls, but soon it grew into this worldwide uh, uh, December festival. And they say uh, that the December Margali, Margali is the Tamil month of December. Margali festival is the largest uh, cultural event in the world you know people f- come you know a whole month long people come from all over the world and you know but it is uh, I mean uh, revelatory to this whole issue itself is that most of the attendees at the festival belong to one particular uh, class and caste so that's how exclusive the uh, you know, Carnatic fraternity kept this art form to itself. Gotcha. It was a very like, Krishna the Brahmins, Brahmins own it, Brahmins listen to it, Brahmins say, wow, that's it. And, and no they one will else. teach only to Brahmins. Okay. And they will enjoy it. The Rasikas will be Brahmins. 
the sabhas are run by the brahmins and the exponents mm. are brahmins now there are out- outliers there are some uh, very few uh, non brahmins that actually uh, breach this and go inside but they are not famous they are not big actually most don't they don't get chances to sing at these sabhas so we have something over the past several years we are having the alternate to margali you know margali in makkali say the common man's music in margali so that happens in parks and in you know other sabhas we have folk arts and so there's this other movement going on so these two worlds never blend you know uh, those people live in their own worlds and they talk a lot about it and the uh, you know news media papers everything are owned by that cast and class so there's a lot more noise to hear about it so the whole dichotomy is this for a long time all of us we said you know we, i mean it, it doesn't matter to us what ranjini gayatri said to tm krishna or or how the music academy responded to ranjini gayatri i mean it's between them how does it even impact our lives how does it even matter mm. but then you know it's just uh, going on but the national media picked up the story and then it's going on uh, frankly to me it doesn't make any uh, uh, it doesn't make any difference <laughs> okay i'll tell you one reason i mean one, mm. one reason is because you you will hear any they will say uh they say carnatic music cannot be one is it's pure they appeal to the purity of the carnatic music hmm. so only certain only we are able to uh you know stick to uh, transfer its purity from generation to generation hmm. one another now they say it's complex uh, it's a very complex uh, system of music so common man can't understand can't enjoy it so now that is uh, the a uh, bullshit that we want to call out uh, that's that's the bullshit that tm krishna has been calling out all along if something is complex it can be learned i mean it, it, it's not like common man can't learn something sure. that is uh, complicated yeah um uh, actually uh, i just they gave us series of interviews this duo ranjini gayatri yes. and i'm quoting what they said in uh, one of the interviews it. there is always distinction in any given society that's what we mean here you call it caste and i don't think brahmins are casteist we have not tried to take music away from any community there is always distinction in any given society yes. here you call it caste hmm. and yeah. quote brahmins are soft targets we are the most accepting and least casteist community unquote so yeah. i don't know what they were making their own point <laughs> <laughs> you know so anyway so i i mean and what is i mean their beef is it are they um you know political animals is it just something they've jumped into or do they have a history of having political allegiance or you know canvassing for any party or they no one knows they've just suddenly because no, i don't know much about they're, them they're relatively young women so relatively okay. newer on the scene i've heard them on tv i've i've i watched a lot of their shows on youtube it's beautiful they sing amazingly mm. uh, beautiful I'm, i'm i'm actually a fan of ranjini and gayatri but uh they they were born and grew up in bombay so, so they are not very well i would think they are not very well versed with the politics of tamil nadu here periyar is is our uh, you know he is a big icon here we call him the grand old man of erod and all the progress that tamil nadu has made on several you know health indicators economic indicators women's progress we attribute almost directly to the periyar movement periyar absolutely his teachings You know, so what do you think would have prompted this letter from the two considering they're not even part of like the tamil nadu politics oh, no, but, or the ecosystem no but they come here i mean now uh-huh. they are part of our uh, uh, you know part of the margali makkali say uh, uh, part of the december uh, festival organized by the music uh, academy and they are very popular now you know gaining in popularity now tm krishna has been going hammer and tongs against this uh, brahmanical hegemony Uh, of the classical you know arts hmm. music and dance and he sings in praise of periyar periyar who was very he didn't mince his words in his uh, in his like criticism periyar, of brahmanism yes he was very aggressive i mean i mean as was anyone because i mean that's how yeah. even that uh, uh, kanshiram slogans tilak hmm. tarazu aur talwar inko maro jute char the whole yeah. thing you know that i mean it, you may not agree with everything like even this now many people who you know congress that mm. is going to be doing a protest with uh, aap leaders in 
if they are allowed to on the 31st of march mm. in ramlila maidan yeah the rhetoric from the stage was put everyone in jail na yeah now, now everyone yeah. is in jail <laughs> it's rhetoric is one thing so yeah you have to understand all what we are said in context yeah. you know this is he spoke during the 20s and 30s it was a different language of that period was much accepted you know lot of brahmins were part of the periyar movement also right absolutely sure he he was not anti brahmin he was basically anti superstition he was more a rational uh, thinker no also so dr rao i mean i personally think that you have to see things in context even if he was anti brahmin in the yeah. india he grew up in i don't grudge him that you know it's yeah. like malcolm x Yeah sure he was pro civil liberties but i would say he was anti white i mean some of his yes. like there was a very marked difference in malcolm x's you know approach to civil liberties and martin luther king's mm. now Absolutely. i think martin luther king would be more effective but but yeah. uh, you know it's okay for like uh, subhash chandra bose saying we'll go to war against yeah. the british bapu yeah. wasn't anti british he was anti colonialism but i don't grudge Uh, you know the, the the freedom fighters who wanted a more radical approach so Absolutely. i don't think there's even anything wrong with being anti brahmin at a time when brahmanism is you see the numbers yeah i mean when they yes. swallowed up all the resources in the country and you're the yes. smallest community mm. it is and gatekeeping no complete gatekeeping education all opportunities all government positions no music music actually which evolved from uh, another uh, even carnatic music and dance i mean classical bharatanatyam is not the forte of the brahmins it was part of the hereditary courtesans uh, community from and they were denotified they were banned from you know uh, because of lot of social change that's another story uh, but uh, you know it was uh, taken over by the brahmins and uh, they completely yeah. in made fact, their own in that context there was also an old quote of uh, tm krishna that was dragged out where he had said mm. ms subalakshmi ah, to get yes. more uh, accepted in the brahmin tradition of her music you know yeah. had to distance herself from the legacy of where she got the music which was the courtesan tradition is that something on the along the lines yeah. what was it is a previously from the the courtesan the formerly devadasi uh, uh, tradition community okay so yes Her son, uh, though, wrote in the Hindu. I think great grandson wrote, yeah, I and mean, he defended yeah. T. M. Krishna's uh, stance so beautifully. And he said that uh, if uh, Emma Sama was alive today, she would engage in a you know very uh, healthy discussion on this. Also, I don't find T. M. Krishna particularly radical in his utterances. Yeah. It's it's very inclusive. He talks about. You know, like coming up with one song a day or a month on Allah and Jesus, including LGBTQI Dalits. Yeah. But he's not. He's very opposed to the Sang Parivar, but I don't think he's as radical in his utterances as say a Parivar. He's no, not so. No, not. No, not not at all. You know, so I think I what's happening yeah. right now is, and I've seen this. Uh, it's a question of you know the tail wagging the dog. Social media trends mm. determine what mm. takes up. For example, there are people on Twitter. who today want to see periyar as a villain because of his utterances at that time and anyone mm. who today praises periyar for or doesn't for, outrightly say that he that, was oh, bad periyar and was, he was a terrible racist yeah. you know you want to say periyar was casteist in fact so polit- political parties are kind of trying to push that that periyar should be apologetic for what he said rather yeah. than you know the entire brahmin tradition being feeling guilty i mean there has to be a periyar guilt as opposed to the brahmin guilt you know yes. it's just they have reversed it now a dozen nutters on twitter will say this those nutters are usually you know p- people who are a couple of them are former employees of some rather large news organizations i have noticed yes yes, Now, yes we know who talking about yeah. suddenly they that becomes the that becomes the legacy media like it's such a completely idiotic yeah. narrative or even something you know in any rational t- discussion yeah. and, if you thanks put thanks to social media all the idiots have found each other yeah you know? and, and because idiots it's real it's, i mean i think kunal kamras that one statement ki expletives coming up ki big yes. boss have you ever wondered ki do you understand hindi doctor rao yes i do yeah okay so aapne kabhi socha hai ki har jagah bharat ke har kone se chutiye kyun laye jate hain big boss pe जैसे सलमान खान नॉर्मल लगे ही सेज एंड ही इज टू ही सेज स्टैंड अप कॉमिक्स और अफ्रेड ऑफ मेकिंग जोक्स एट सलमान खान बिकॉज सलमान खान यू नो ही इज बेसिकली अ गून अ टुच्चा गून एंड बॉम्बे बेसिकली स्टैंड अप कॉमेडी इज अदर देन अ फ्यू एक्सेप्शन लाइक 
Varun Grover, uh, Kunal Kamran. It's, it's a, I mean, it's a very cowardly profession. They will not do any political comedy because mm. it may hit them. Yeah. So they would be scared of cracking Salman jokes. एक टाइम पे कॉमेडियन लोग सलमान खान से डरते थे। फिर मोदी जी आया तो देखा सलमान खान की गांड फटी हुई है। ये लोड़ों से हम क्यों डरे? रात को दारू पी के फोन करेगा ठीक है तो हमने भी दो टीन ड्रिंक लगा के उठा लेंगे क्या प्रॉब्लम है सब डरते हैं सलमान खान के ऊपर जोक नहीं मारने का जो वो लड़कियां हमको लाफे मार रहे हैं और हम उस आदमी पे जोक नहीं मार रहे हैं इसे बताओ तुम्हें जोक मारने में शर्म आती है उसको अपनी गर्लफ्रेंड को लाफे मारने में शर्म नहीं आती सो आई थिंक सोशल मीडिया इज सच अ नट अ काइंड ऑफ दैट दे फाइंड द नटर्स so that the anchors can look slightly normal mm. absolutely <laughs> so the pushback against ranjini gayatri hasn't been uh, uh, very high uh, um, in the left liberal spaces here because mm. we don't want to you know make them uh, give them more uh, platform you know to to come up with their you know idiocy so it's right. it's dying down here actually i would say so mm. a, a, as an issue it's more or less over you think it will not spill into elections and become this because i don't think so absolutely not we have far more important things to worry about i i should hope so but i must say that ranjini yeah. gayatri and vivek agnihotri have one thing in common they both think that brahmins have been persecuted in our country <laughs> yes. that is something they have in common so i really uh, like would... a lot of uh, yeah white brahmin men think so now it's the <laughs> Uh, you know the white brahmin women are uh, thinking that now <laughs> right <laughs> so have you any comments on this before we say a question I, about this i haven't uh, in fact i once uh, two three years ago i came across his article tm krishna i think either in toi or in an express i think he had written about ram mm. and i was very impressed mm. and then i referred him for the interview with you Right. So you interviewed yeah. T M Krishna, I think. Mm-hmm. You did, na? It's a few years yes, ago. Yes, yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I read his article. I think I did. I end up interviewing him, or was it a podcast? No, I'll you, just check. Hmm. Uh-huh. I think what Ashwarya is saying about taking classical music to the masses, you you really have to be against the arts to see anything against this project. I mean, taking uh-huh. it to the masses, including people, you have to have that so that you make sure the art doesn't die. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I I just cannot the- see. the opposition to what he's doing here especially like i said because i really don't find him radical in in his views i think it's he's mostly talking about inclusion that's it which that's it. should not a be a contentious you issue and me, in 20 23 in the brahmin circles it is yeah. very explosive and uh, uh, you know crazy and i'll i'll just wanted to add to this you know what is important for me i i just want to add say i'm a christian and i'm a dalit So for me, uh, and because I produced Carnatic music albums, you no, know, I was completely. But this is not in Modi's India. I did this about ten years back. So uh, <laughs> there was a lot of criticism because so we did a Bharatanatyam uh, um, dance for one of the songs, a music video, and uh, the women uh, didn't wear botu. So there's like, how can your Bharatanatyam dancers not have botu? Your what is botu? Da, 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 da. So there was one. What botu is botu? Is, uh, the bindi. Okay. Bindi. Okay. I see. So there was this thing. So uh, the, basically, they want to say, Carnatic music is ours. No one else should enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, I mean, they will uh, cast wild aspers- aspersions on you. Right. Oh, uh, so uh, in Jay- my case, they said conversion. You know, oh, this so is you, just uh, one so you, more. So you, so you were trying to convert people through that. Through Bharat Natyam. Through Bharat Natyam. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's, it's a bit like the Oxford debate. So before the debate starts, say, okay, how many of you agree with the proposition? Everyone puts up their hands. So before the performance, pull up your. How many of you are Christian? So then after the performance, how many of you are Christian? Then you see if it's gone up, the numbers gone up or come down. Uh, but sir, Jai Shri did that interview with Jai Shri, not me. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, interesting to note. But I uh, do hope more important issues dominate prime time. But this was something that I was very curious about. So I thought we must get. someone who understands these things to explain it to us but thank you so much for taking the time dr rao and thank you for the work you, you do thank you thank you and i uh, i'm a great, big fan of news laundry and you people uh, your podcast is very very uh, you know thought provoking thank you thank you thank any you recommendations so you have 
for our audience that they can read, they can watch, they can listen to that would enrich their lives in any way? Yes, I have three recommendations, but they're all one. Okay. I'm a big sucker for uh, police drama, crime, thrillers, etc. Whodunits. So uh, on, on Prime, there are three uh, women police dramas. Have you all seen Happy Valley? Uh, it is a three season police drama. It is about a woman police officer and she goes about in Yorkshire. It's a small sleepy town in uh, nestled somewhere in the middle of uh, the UK where there's crime, there's drugs, etc. So it's a crazy, it's a wickedly funny, it's a beautiful show. It's, it's really nice. Happy Valley is a must see. Do not miss it. Okay. It's wonderful. Uh, and other two more police, uh, women police uh, drama series on Prime as well. Blue Lights, it's set in Ireland and there's Deadlock, it's set in Australia. So three different uh, women-led police dramas. They're awesome. You must not miss it. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, you so much and thank you for your time and hope to see you sometime if you're in Delhi. Do come to our studio. Yes, I will. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. On that note, I would like to remind everybody again, do subscribe to newsrunner.com contribute, pay to keep news free. We have a joint News Minute News Laundry subscription. I would hope you guys would double the utility, double the support and do support journalists because journalists need more support than opposition leaders these days. <laughs> so, and we don't want journalists also to be going to the same people buying electoral bonds who are also advertising. Something should be left to the public. So, Raman sir, Manisha, so many things have happened. So we let Manisha decide what we should discuss because Varun Gandhi has been dropped and Jitin Prasad has got his ticket but Menka Gandhi has retained Pilibhit. No, Rampur. Sultanpur. Sultanpur. Yeah. Um, Jindal of course. Uh, Ruchetra. And uh, Mandi. Ma Mandi, you know, so much is happening. The ticket distribution, so much is happening, you know, all over the country. But in Delhi streets, I was just you know, observing that when they said we'll get out of the Prime Minister's house, as to the Prime Minister's house these days looks like it's never looked in my lifetime. It is like, I've, I have stay quite close to the Prime Minister's house, so I pass it quite regularly. I'm always blown away by the amount of, they've increased the security there. Mm. Uh, and they said we'll get out of the Prime Minister's house. The police, matlab, they did not let them reach anywhere close. And I was thinking there was a time where every third, fourth month I've had get out PM Manmohan Singh's house. And kitna hum bichare ko gali dete the. He was right. No, no, I, I have <laughs> no... History is... I have will no, judge me kindly. I have no... Of course, I think at that time he did... He was just saying it. He was being flattering to himself. He could not have <laughs> predicted Modi will be this level. I, I don't think he could have predicted that Modi will do this to India. But now when you look back, sure, I think history will judge him a lot more kindly than the... the than, mm. than that environment did. So what do you want to discuss, Manish? I think the happened? arrest of Arvind Kejriwal. I think that is the biggest news of the week. And I don't know how much prominence it's got in television news, but at the heart of it, this PMLA Act, it's very scary what it is able to do in this case, especially with the tweak. So if you look at this case, essentially, what is the central allegation against ARP that, uh, you know, wholesalers were given their profit margins were increased from 5% to 12% and this 7% margin was given to big businesses which then gave kickbacks to ARP. Classic case of quid pro quo except in this case what's astonishing is that there is no proof. There's no money trail that connects Arvind Kejriwal to any of these allegations. Or even Manish. Even, okay, so okay, at least in Manish and Vijay Nair's case the ED claims that his secretary has said that you know he introduced a policy Vijay Nair was a conduit between the South group. This is all people saying, saying you know, approvers. Basically, hmm. secretaries, former secretaries saying that, you know, this is what happened. Nothing links Arvind Kejriwal to even Manish Sasodia. No one has said on record that Arvind, we heard Arvind say this to Manish and then he introduced the policy. Or we have a WhatsApp message that Arvind said, okay, Kavita should be given one billion. So basically, whatever. they can address, arrest they, anyone or anything. And there's no money trail. Like, there's not, okay... Firstly, anyway, the 7% is supposed to have been spent in Goa. So we don't know what happened, where that money came from. There's absolutely no money trail. And the scary bit is that this PMLA, you know, it basically puts the onus on ARP now to prove itself mm. innocent. And you cannot give bail in PMLA till the court is satisfied that they have not, there's prima facie no 
uh, case against them. No court will ever say that. Which court will ever commit to saying that? Unless no a trial case. has been done. Unless a trial has been done, so you can basically put anyone in jail forever, and there's no recourse. And this is very scary. I think. I mean, you have to leave aside up whether you like them or not. What do you think of this liquor policy? This is very scary for anyone. Anyone in this country. There's one up minister who is already in the jail for the past three years. I think Satender. Satender Jain. Ah. I mean, he, they've well, sent him back and he, he had come also, out from it. He was also. I mean, PMLA was slapped on him, and he is in, inside the jail. He's not getting bail for that. Now two. And in case of Manisha Sodia's bail, it's not as the like, courts have kind of questioned the ED again and again on what proof do you have? How can you link? Will this stand in but court? But they don't give bail. But they can't commit because. It, No court will ever commit to saying that no wrongdoing has happened till they have it on proof. I mean that goes against basic principles of. No, it's a catch twenty two. No, no exactly. trial hasn't happened, so they cannot commit. And until exactly. they commit, they cannot give bail. So it's. So I don't know how the how the courts should take the PMLA. I mean legal position on the PM PMLA. But if you look at the uh, you know entire case, government makes policies and these policies may go wrong, but they whether they are. criminal in nature this is first and this the is the kickback. first time this like, is the first the first step that where you need to identify whether this whether uh, you know what is the criminal nature of this police policy i mean for example uh, modi introduced uh, what is that uh, de- no, demonetization, demonetization. Hmm. he said uh, black money chali jayegi black money aur aur zyada aa gayi and uh, there was a pil also which was rejected in uh, fact that is something that even the cases that come against us you know on it this that often i tell the lawyers why can't we go against the government at what kind of a case is this yeah mm-hmm. what what kind of a ro- rule is this that you can question me on stuff they said that's a policy issue that is the policy of how the income tax act is this thing and the court will never step in on policy yeah. issues this is a policy issue how can the court step in and decide whether you're mm-hmm. guilty or not right. like yeah. now with the electoral bond data out every policy i can say like Technically, there is no criminality in it, but every rule that has been changed for anything uh, from uh, you know mining uh, environment clearances uh, uh, to Ambani Zoo, right? To the pharma company, uh, anything. Were... Then, so every policy of the government is a quid pro quo. They, Modi should be in jail. Mm. You know, it is bizarre. But and no, so bizarre. you can arrest any chief minister, opposition leader under PMLA. They go to jail and then they have to resign. No, so there is a and very, they can't get out. So. Also, there is a very clear trend. Anybody who is not in BJP yeah. is facing the uh, legal action, the criminal action, and the those who were raided and who had criminal charges against them, and yeah. and they have joined BJP. The cases have gone and uh, and Express Investigation said that uh, Express Story yes. said no, the ninety five percent were all opposition yes. leaders. But how the, the so many arrests, so many injustices that are happening in the country. This clearly, I personally think that the Modi government underestimated. the kind of uh, you know appeal that arvind kejriwal still has for example in the german diplomatic office issued a statement they yeah, were summoned mm, by the mea i was impressed the, the US, us the uh, us is you know gloria was summoned by them saying that what what was exact their internal matter this thing was unwarranted aspersions <laughs> abey aspersions of course the world will make you they're running this like putin is russia yeah i mean yeah. of course you can't That's say that's a oh, very correct you parallel. can't Say oh no one should say anything to me because oh we are so great we are mother of democracy but he demonst- demonstrated mm. you're running it like Putin's Russia no yeah. that's how you're running India right now so the question is the the snowball effect and I think they had underestimated the snowball effect in the March thirty first Odhav is coming to Delhi Congress is part of it and unless they turn Delhi into a fortress which they're doing now you know I just like to point out how the media. Was roughed up by the cops mm. Mm. for India trying today, to cover this. India Today photo journalist. And in fact, I don't know how many of them have written articles on this, but I have spoken to reporters who were trying to get to the AAP headquarter. They could not get to the AAP he- headquarter. Some who managed somehow. Yeah. It was empty. Yes. And I've spoken to three reporters who told me this. Yes. And the police saying we are not we have not cordoned off the AAP headquarter. They are just virtually the seized. So I mean, if you run a country like this, you can't expect the world to clap and say, "Oh, look at these wonderful people who stand up for liberty." I mean, it is bizarre. But what is sad is, even the fourth pillar of democracy, media, they are not standing up for their own reporters. Yeah. You yeah, so the Hindustan photojournalist has fractured his arm. Hmm. The guy, the viral picture that's you know with the cop holding, holding the neck the is neck. an India Today photojournalist. Hmm. Now I'm very sure if this was West Bengal or if there this was you know 
any of the Congress states, Sudhir would have done a prime time show. Ye dekho kaise. No one has said anything. No one. This guy, you can see the cop holding his neck. He's an India yes. Today guy. Yes. And but the big question, I think, also is to really this will be very interesting elections because 2019 Lok Sabha BJP sweeps and gets 56 percent vote share. The next year, AAP sweeps state elections and gets 53 percent vote share. Mm. So clearly, there's an overlap. We know of this course. that uh, you know the Delhi voter likes BJP in center and AAP at state. What are they going to do this time? and how will will parties be able to mobilize voters to see through this very dangerous trend because i do think this has not gone down well with people i do think there's a sense among people that you know don't this has gone a bit too far he's an elected guy he's highly popular they've decisively won state assembly elections to put him in jail like this is i think also as we speak the election commission has issued a notice to supriya shanate and also bjp's dilip ghosh i Haan. think to do a balancing act but This and the National Commission of Women have has taken cognizance of Supriya Shanate's tweet, but on way more horrific stuff. <laughs> it is, uh, it is a dis- what you've done to every institution, and yet you don't want to be criticized. Right. Dude, really, this government is in a different zone of. But I also nothingness. feel like Congress, like I feel so angry with Supriya Shanate or her team, whatever. There's so much you can take on Kangana with. Mm. Why do you have to tweet something so stupid and lowly, yar? Like, wa- apne pair mein kuladi maarte ro. <laughs> There's so much you can, if you wanted to counter her or whatever, make fun of her final candidate. It's pretty crass what they said. Meanwhile, Mahua Moitra has been summoned yet again. CBI search her house. Apparently, the her mother oppo- was. Uh, the opposition has, I mean, I mean, Modi government has mounted, you know, attack on uh, the opposition. Their their bank, I think they they are going to slap another income tax notice on. Uh, no, not notice. They are going to, uh, you know. Uh, Take uh, they have already taken out one hundred and thirty five crore, no? Ah, from yeah. Congress saying the income crores. tax, <laughs> and they're going to take some more now. But it's really tragic that the media is not. I mean, media by we mean the popular, most loudest voices because this is this is yeah, on the this day is scary. Arrested, this is Putin level stuff. No, on now. the day Kejriwal was, was arrested, there was. Uh, you know coverage. Ah, coverage. There was a proper coverage. No, of course. But during coverage the day. is like you know, if they're guilty, uh, नहीं हो तो क्या डर है? Prove करके आ जाओ बाहर. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, but uh, the provisions yeah, yeah. are very scary. Yeah. No one can, PM no one can prove themselves innocent with these provisions. Yes. Yeah. Anyone's is going to rot in jail with these yes. provisions. And There's just no fighting. Actually, it. the thing is that although either there should be equal opportunity, it should not just be the ED that should be allowed to try people under uh, PMLA. what's it called PMLA. Give it to. Any C C I D police? Then you see every political leader will be in jail. No, if you have a good I had said it in the past also. If you just look at the investigate investigating uh, you know agencies in India, hmm. C B I always used to take the case first. The case used to come to C B I. So after C B I, they will or I T they will hand it over. They will just A D will examine. the mm. uh, you know closes and everything and see if there is a case of pmla or money laundering money laundering case hai ki nahi i mean they, they they used to file a case after cbi files the charge sheet but now the trend is uh, opposite well, yeah. because ed uh, you know the provisions of this pmla and all they are so draconian that you cannot get bail so, so the cbi up, well, has been uh, relegated into the background mm. and ed has become the prime investigating agency And if you look at their uh, also record, the success record is not even one percent right now. Now, some crystal ball gazing. I know that is not what we usually do here, but sometimes we like to. Do you think, or in in your analysis, sitting in the air conditioned studios of News Laundry, bloody air conditioned, wale? What do you know? Soon we'll be hitting the road, though, in heat wave, peak <laughs> heat wave in May. You can, Manisha. I shall we'll still be, be sitting in air conditioned <laughs> studios, uh, but. Do you think this has it's it's going to be play positively for the BJP or it's gone backfired? It's boomeranged on them. What do you think, Manisha? I don't think it's played positively at all. But I do think that for an electoral outcome, you need political mobilization. So much will depend on how our Congress, India Alliance, and other parties can come together and really make this into an issue. Rally people around it, protest, go out, and really kind of milk this. Mm. But I don't think fundamentally people are okay with it because he's a popularly elected leader. If he's you not... if you make Kejriwal today the referendum point, mm. it this issue is going to hit the opposition uh, Modi government like hell. Mm. 
But having said that, the opposition parties would not like to see Rahul Gandhi would not like to see Kejriwal growing, yeah, you know, above his stature, his stature or Mamta. <laughs> Mamta above uh, her stature. Mm. So maybe they will not go to that point. So I think uh, the impact is not going to be much. Uh, political impact. I mean, especially the coming election. Uh, I'll be, I, I will really be surprised if uh, the opposition is able to win, win uh, you know, I mean, AAP is Delhi. able to win two, even one or two seats. One or two seats from Delhi. India, because now they are No, together. Delhi. In Delhi, no, no, India uh, Alliance because ah, they're India together. Alliance, whatever. I, and in I, I, one I year, it. there's the state elections. Don't yeah. forget, like in Delhi Assembly Delhi goes Assembly to election. vote, so you've Assembly crippled an win. entire party. The, but by Assembly, I think what they'll try to also do is President's rule or some shit. They'll come up mm. with they keep doing. But I think that I was very surprised, and this is purely anecdotal. The people I know, mm. I have a few relatives who are Modi supporters. After this arrest, they said, "Yeah, this is ridiculous. We, we are not voting for this guy." This guy is just, he goes, because, oh, you know, they I'm very happy. To so hear I that. was very surprised. Then I asked, you know, some people around in my colonies, you know, what do you think? You know, people were not particularly, you know, anti-Modi. They were, they were saying, yeah, he's good for them. This has actually put off a lot of his voters because who also like Kejriwal. But it has, the reverse is not true. It has not, the people are cheering, Are Nandar. they would vote for Modi, whether he did demonetization, anyway, yeah. whether he told them to stand and say, Tali baja, ab kathak karo, whatever, they would vote for him. It is that one in the middle. That decides said, the votes also. Yeah, who has said that, dude, this guy will do anything. Tomorrow we are also in shit. So I think that... that the that only thing clear. I do feel is that, you know, people, I think a lot of people recognize these dictatorial tendencies and they recognize what's happening with opposition, chief ministers. But somehow the... The cluelessness of Rahul Gandhi is scarier to people than the autocracy of Modi. Like in a lot of conversations, people know that this is dictatorship. Karne wala hai, ye to kuch but then the moment you put Rahul in front of them, I think just having a clueless person is scarier than having a dictatorial person. And this is borne out in a Pew Research. Hilal Ahmed has done a very good piece in the print where he says that uh, most Indians want representative democracy. Uh, they are very happy with representation within electoral democracy in the sense more women, more people from mm. marginalized. But they have a liking for a strong leader who can get things done. Mm. There is that space. I think we are at that point in India where there's an appreciation. I guess because we are fed up of chaos. I mean, Not as a country, we India, don't want world chaos. Over. World over. Maybe. No, I think so. My experience That is, is what is helping Modi, I feel. Just even, Rahul as a face. Even in Bollywood movies, if you see animal... Mm. Or for that matter, any other movie where the if the hero is strong, stronger, mm. and uh, even if he is dictator, uh, I mean uh, he he is draconian in, in his behavior. People flouts rules. People like thing. him, so I think people see a stronger, per, strong person uh, in uh, Modi rather than a dictator. Dictator he. No, but I think the... Which is why I think Kejriwal is a scarier uh, proposition for the BJP because people don't people don't see him as with the election no, no. results, you see. I think that is clear that for the BJP, they see Kejriwal as the biggest danger to them, which ah, is yeah. why for someone who was so small, ah. they yeah. came and they changed a few rules as soon as they got their first term, taking the ACB out of Kejriwal's control in Delhi. I mean, the way they went after him from day one, day one. it was clear. And many people who have been close to the BJP will tell you, uh, they you know, changed Mr. Modi. the rules. They changed the administrative rules, rules of Delhi. after Supreme Court, uh, you know, gave a decision in his favor. So they clearly realize that Kejriwal is the bigger danger yes. to Modi than anything else. But the same Pew Research, I don't know if it's the same one you're talking about. It also said that uh, you know Indians have a liking for military auto rule, autocrats, and yes, you mm. know that the it's a and it's gone up in the last five years. You know, from the last time this research was done to now. The number hasn't gone down. The number mm. who prefer autocracy yes. has gone up. Clear, decisive leader who's not, yeah, who's not bogged down by, say, coalition. Or by power. rules yeah. and, you know, these inconvenient things like But I think that yeah. if you had an opposition <laughs> face which was a little more coherent than what Congress is putting up, Modi could get a very good uh, fight. I mean, honestly, I, I think feel. if you had a level playing field, Mr. Modi would have not been this large in life image. Dude, you have the ED, CBI, ah, the the so to many. Get, so many people ah. want to go and join, but they are scared to go. They don't want to go to jail. Yeah, ah. I'm telling you, like I myself, and it's ah. not like I'm scared of going to jail. 
बट इट इज गोट इन ट्राइंग टू गो टू जेल इफ यू गो टू जेल फॉर बिग फॉर ट्राइंग टू घेर आउट पी एम हाउस आई हेर आउट मनमोहन सिंह हाउस टू थ्री टाइम्स you know that we were picked up today to they'll slap terrorism charges against all yes. so this i mean what i actually don't agree with this that if there was a credible face of the opposition modi would not be there is no credible face of the opposition because he has basically completely taken away resources which the electoral bond tells us the, fourth, the media has been bought over media. at a level where people yes. even who want to show the others are, are too scared yes. to show agencies have been bought over there's intimidation at of the most shocking level that's happening mm. with uh, agencies if you take all this away mr modi is he's no malin yeah. brando or amitabh bachchan yeah dude but i think he rahul is, there is you give you give an auditorium full of people 30 minutes of modi and 30 minutes of kejriwal i can ah. tell you kejriwal will make mr modi look like of course. a complete so, but, but will anyone give that so it's not there no why focus on rahul they can have so many Mm. Again, who the hell was Kejriwal in two thousand ten? Yeah, he was no, nothing. nothing. But three think... thousand people had gathered. Right now, whatever ten thousand people have gathered in Ladakh. Has anyone gone live? We've done a couple of stories. Mm. Less than one third of those people had live wall-to-wall coverage here in Jantar. I mean, I can tell you because I used to be calling up reporters and asking them right. to cover it. You give the same exposure, Mr. Modi will not last a year. Right. I think Rahul Gandhi, even if he gets the media exposure, it's. I don't think his is just no, a media problem. I'm saying mm. no, no. I'm talking about Rahul because I think people see Rahul as no, the other no, alternative. No, and that is because the no, that, that the is because opposition. Modi says. Ah, Modi, Modi says Rahul. Rahul. But Rahul. national level, see, the, with the same resources that Modi has, regional leaders have taken him on and beat him in hollow, because there's leadership, there's strategy, there's work on ground, there's cadre, there's. There's something to these leaders which a Congress doesn't have. Yeah, no, but I the think Modi, like the but, current but Congress no, cannot credit, take on. But Modi. to discredit Modi, you don't need Rahul. Modi, it could be anyone, right? Modi yeah, but right now we don't have. Nah, they are presenting us no, only as Rahul as an option. They are BJP. Is, Modi you don't have to, even the Congress. So let even the, the Congress do it. But what I'm saying is that that doesn't matter. If you give a level playing, no, what I'm saying is why should they decide who they put against who? Let the level playing field decide who they put against. You know, like the. That that WWF that used to happen, thirty people in the ring. Now the last two surviving will figure it out. Let it go like that. Who and why should we have Rahul versus Modi? Yeah. I reject that yeah. whole thing because that's what they're giving us. Who is they? The Congress party. They are not uh, protecting anyone. But why do you have to listen to the Congress party? But as a voter, I'm talking as an Indian voter. When you go out to vote, you're choosing a central figure, your prime minister. There is the India Alliance, which doesn't have the prime minister thing. And there's very clearly Congress projects Rahul. All no. said and done, Rahul is their leader. No, no, there's no, no one else. Maybe Congress is leader. No, no but what I'm saying is. So why will I? So for me, I'll go for Modi because he's just there's a more the, coherence. The, so there's the, more coherence to his. So what I'm politics. saying is that then you have decided that the Congress and BJP are deciding for you who the leaders should be. Had anyone decided? Man, Mohan Singh will be O H D. We got to be Y K Gujral will be. What I'm saying is that this entire framing of Modi versus Rahul. Is the success of the BJP's media machine? It is a completely Simple. made up. Of, yeah, it is it, absolutely. Look, tell me one other election in, and I can tell you, sir has covered more uh -huh. than me. I have seen five or seven uh, Lok Sabha elections. I have not even seen one election. It was not Atal versus Manmohan. Before Atal became, it was not Atal versus Sonia. It was it Sonia was, versus Atal. No, it was Sonia not. was pretty much the face of UPA one. She got them to no, win. No, but with a great no, no, machinery no, 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 also. No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Hmm. UPA one was not Sonia versus Atal. Sonia was no one before UPA one happened, dude. You are forgetting. No, See, but th the, there was this whole thing of where she was going to be the prime minister, and then Sushma Swaraj yeah, yeah, and all that. That is because they had got the numbers. Okay, so. but ah. she was pretty much the person on. No, no, rallies. they were not even expecting. I am talking about. That, no. I don't know if you recall. They had no idea they would win. Ah. I remember Montek Singh Aluwalia, who was with World Bank that night. He was called by Pan Mohan Singh, please come back to India. He came next week. He resigned his job. The UPA and I can tell you, friends of mine were part of that. They had no clue they were winning no that. No clue. But forget that. I am talking about the run-up to that election. Hmm. Was it Sonia versus Atal? Are you kidding? No, no. But I think Sonia was pretty much a prominent face in that no, campaign, dude. and there was a coherent Congress leadership. No, yeah, there I wasn't. Know. I don't was... think the UPA one can be compared to the Congress of today. Okay. I do think there were. I, I'm not leaders. comparing again. Hmm. I'm talking about again. We are going into a different. UPA one is a post-election phenomena. I'm not comparing UPA one today's Congress. UPA one was a post-election yes, phenomena. There was no UPA that contested the election. The yeah, election yeah. was I mean, contested. By Congress, and I can tell you, I was very much writing on that. I was at 
writing regularly for NDTV, the political satire show, Sonia was nothing. Sonia became this political entity after election. Dude, Sitaram Kesri had pushed her out of Congress. What are you talking about? Mm. She but had UPA, when I've read so walked... many of these political... Like Nirja Chaudhary's book also talks about her campaigning, how she was a face, yeah, she really yeah. took them on. We, like we, the... the UP, Congress itself like projected her as this Rahul person. Rahul Gandhi himself. They gave her credit for everything. She was not, they gave her credit later on. But her entire political... She really earned her chops as a political strategist. Till election, Tina, where did the concept of there is no alternative emerge from? It emerged from the 2004 election. Mm. There is no alternative. If not Atal, who? Mm. That is the genesis of this question. Mr. Modi has not invented this question. And then... I've, t- I've told I've, on Hafta, Pramod Mahajan used to threaten reporters like this here in front of them. Dude, we are coming back. He was so confident. Sonia Gandhi's entire stature and oh, she's so big and everyone's scared of her was a completely post-election phenomenon. Before that, no one was scared of Sonia Gandhi. She was not such a big deal in politics. The way Sitaram Kesri humiliated her, what are you talking about? She uh-huh. had to leave the Congress office and, you know, in tears, go to a house on foot. She was nothing here. I don't know. But UPA one, like what I've read from a lot of political commentators of that time, she was supposed to be like one of the big no, no. election campaigners for the Congress, the big she face. She may have been, she but she was nobody for the rest of the public. See, once you win, everybody's great. But the UPA one, would you ascribe Congress's win during UPA one to Sonia? No, you would not. No. UPA one was a coalition of a, what, 27 uh, parties? Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying Congress is... No, no. Rahul Gandhi UPA? was surprised to uh, win 21 seats from UP. Yeah. He was very surprised. Uh, UPA 2, I would say, was phenomenal because of Manmohan. There were a variety of reasons. And the farm loan waiver, basically. That it, was, yeah, really. it was a big deal. Dude, okay, U- all said and none, but I still think 72 seats that left, Congress yeah. is not providing an alternative to Modi. And it is a contest of national parties right now. And no, there's no, no other Isli, national party to the BJP. I think Modi... Congress has a clueless leadership. Yeah, They're not inspiring. No, no, They're sure not... there are, but that, again, see, there are two things. And even you if you give him the media, I don't think he'll win. this is a phone... And this is a piece of paper. This is a piece of paper because this is a phone. Again, you are saying Congress has a clueless leadership as if I'm opposing that. I'm not pushing back on that. I agree with you. Hmm. I'm disagreeing on the following. That means Modi is the only alternative. That is what I'm disagreeing with. That, I'm not saying that. uh, But I'm saying that current uh, sort of choices in front of the voter for the election is a Congress. Rahul Gandhi and uh, Modi. And I am saying that is purely because of the Modi way the media so. has ah, framed it. Modi. I am saying you are taking something as a given as if it is a natural, as a, that's the axiom. It is not a given. That is something that has been framed. This is not red because it was bonded. We chose it to be red. If the designers of the studio had said this is not going to be red, it wouldn't be red. It could be any color. The media, the agencies and the corporation of this country have decided to pitch it Modi versus Rahul. Otherwise, let chaos prevail and see who emerges. Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it's not. A, you take the forget the other agents. Take media away. See how long Modi's invincibility yeah. stays. It helps Modi to project Rahul Gandhi. It helps him. It helps the BJP. Not no, just Rahul not Gandhi. Like Congress no. is saying so, people's credibility. Na, people's yeah. credibility doesn't fall because there is someone to make it fall. If you let people criticize Modi the way they want to. In mainstream media, mm. his stature will fall. Ra- Rahul's doesn't have to rise. How many, like Modi's latest speech in what was this um, uh, summit where he's India will be the world load bearing, whatever. <laughs> Complete nonsensical stuff. You let people ra- make montage of that and run it on prime time. See what credibility he has left. Mm. Cloud say, we have done this. I have sent it in 1970 email. You know, what I'm that saying is, that is but there, these but these run as montages on legacy media. Let them run as montages on legacy media of Modi. See in four years how much credibility. I think media is a big factor in their arsenal or why they win, but I don't think it's the only one. I do think like yeah, there's absolutely. a lot more to what the BJP is doing. And yeah, I mean I do think all these regional Mamta, Kejriwal, Tejasvi, all these guys with the same conditions have been able to give Modi a very good tucker. Precisely because they no politics and Congress is failing at politics. Hmm. Anyway, on that note, we shall take the emails of the week. You can give us your feedback, your suggestions, your recommendations, your critique, your criticism. But we only entertain the criticism and feedback of our subscribers. So unless you're a paying subscriber, 
we will not really include your email or your feedback. So mail us at podcasts at newslawny dot com. I repeat, podcasts at newslawny dot com, or click on the link which opens up this little form, and you can give us your feedback directly. That is a more efficient way of doing it. So here is what we have from the last few. So Manisha, you haven't been here for a while. Yeah, I'll read. <laughs> So Shweta Godavarthi says hi uh, dear NL congratulations project electoral bond congratulations NL and project electoral bond team I've been following NL's reporting on political funding since your piece on 19th Feb 2024 and the stories have educated me of the extent of nexus between corporates political parties and power and enforcement agencies however I'm failing to see any direct establishment of quid pro quo is NL doing stories investigations examining casual evidence of an understanding between a corporate and a ruling party for favors in return for money for the time frame of deposit and encashment of ebs or am i missing something else for the jaded public it remains no more than further evidence of crony capitalism harassment by enforcement agencies and hamam mein sab nange hain rhetoric which is problematic in itself but not enough to jolt us citizens to action keep up the good work and i had the same question of you today there's one story that is coming up no Yeah, we can't say in as many words. <laughs> It's good pro quo, but yes, if you look at the proximity of the dates, you know hmm. when the bond was bought. Okay, hmm. say it was uh, bought say on twenty seventh of March, right? Today is twenty seventh of March. First uh, of April, the BJP takes uh, in cash in that bond. It encashes that, yeah. Okay, and seventh uh, contract is seventh April. Something happens. Right. either a contract is being given uh, or there is a some tweak in the sure, you know policy. policy matter i mean so, yeah i so think so that is it so so it needs to be further probed yeah i uh, think what what is left now is money money trail is also there in a way exactly i think there is more evidence of quid pro quo here yes. than there is Then in there are. yes <laughs> but yeah yes. but also you know what india has extortive bribery one bribery is that you give me money uh-huh. and i will do your work One bribery is unless you give me money, I'll finish you. Huh. Which Or is also bribery. If you want to continue with yeah. your business happily, you our better. first story, of, which was based on the trust, <laughs> the list that uh, uh, BJP had given hmm. to the election commission. So we identified forty-one such companies, which were either raided, you know, by IT or 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 uh, GST or uh, you know this uh, ED. and uh, before they you know gave donation to the bjp one case that i found very shocking was this delhi liquor scam uh, liquor policy actually we should stop calling it a scam because we don't know if it is uh. but uh, this p sarat chandra reddy who gave 5 crore to bharatiya janata party 5 <laughs> days after, after he, he was, was taken custody approver. and then 25 crore the day after he was turned an approver <laughs> so this is a person an approver in a case against the opposition party which uh, the bjp has yes. and he's given 25 crore i think it's so so you now become the approver or you give us the obviously as journalists we can't directly say anything because uh, but say. the facts kind of uh, so you just, tell the story you need to uh, you know make it 2 uh, plus 2 uh, so i but, but the investigating agency should we are giving the uh, we yeah. are giving enough hints that there is a prima facie case for further investigation but that's up to the agencies but swetha to answer your question yes there are lots more stories coming up based on electoral yeah. bonds many you will see them continue over the next few weeks yes dr skeptic says in a reply to a journalist asking about how muslims won't be able to practice their sharia law amit shah replied indian muslim has not been living as per sharia law since british times because the criminal code was always uniform if sharia is applied then thieves will have their hands cut rapists will be stoned to death muslims can't take loans can't take interest to which prominent muslim handles on x replied that they do indeed want sharia criminal code applied in india people like anas tanveer hafta panelist on ucc has tweeted in response to this that he'll support bjp if they bring sharia criminal code my question to the panel is how will india address this kind of religious extremism where prominent muslims want to take us back to barbaric times of hands being cut and adulterers being stoned well <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what the others, uh, others, but I can't speak for the gentleman who you have mentioned. I am just going on his Twitter timeline. I don't know what he has. I said. think maybe he does. He mean it sarcastically? Was he being uh, sarcastic? Be maybe he is being sarcastic. No, I don't know, but uh, just uh, just to give you an idea that I um, have spoken to. Okay, here it is. Amisha is asking legitimate question. Anas Tanveer, so advocate on record, SC. So the thing is that uh, you know. and this is the problem with religion and i've discussed this often and many of our co-panelists have disagreed at that time 
uh, I don't know whether you are aware or not, uh, Dr. Skeptic, even the Sharia law is interpreted differently by different people. Ah. So there was this entire debate was happening and there was someone who is quote unquote a Islamic scholar and I was very surprised when he said that uh, I'm not saying Sharia should be here but this is a wrong interpretation. Sharia doesn't say you have to cut off the hands. And you are. I was like, well, that's what is happening. Like, I'm not going to, I really don't have the time to go read what mm. is said in this hadith and that hadith and doc, let Dr. Zakir Hussain do that. <laughs> whatever his name is, Zakir Nai. But the point is, I was like, dude, everybody has their own interpretation of everything. So, Which is why you need a common criminal code. Yeah, exactly. Because right? you can't have Pakistan different people be, interpreting uh, it differently. Anonymous says, how do you think parties like BJP decide on keeping the same candidate for a Lok Sabha election versus replacing with a new one? Is there a scientific data back method for this, which Modi Shah will use, like carrying out surveys? Yeah, all parties do carry out surveys in their constituencies on popularity. So Not it, just the parties, individually. Yeah, uh, individually. So this would be, uh, there would be some assessment that they do. Unless until also there are money bags which are important for a party. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, everything else takes a backseat. Ravinder Singh says, Hi team, love your work as always. Just wanted to let you know this week I received a notification on my iPhone that my password for newslaundry.com has been compromised and appeared in a data leak. Really? Hmm? Not sure if this has anything to do with the attack on your website, but this does make me worried. Please send us details for this. We should. Yeah, Ravinder, just mail me at abhinandansekri at gmail.com. I mean, although there has been no attack on our data because um, the attack on our website is basically server just sending traffic. There's no data that goes the other way. But uh, if you've got such an alert, A, just check if it's actually from us. Hmm. Because I have got a lot of alerts. On, did you guys also get it? From me only. Hmm. I need money, etc. No. With my photograph and all that. No. What? No. T Tanishka, who all got it? You got it, Aryan? Sometime back. Yeah, sometime back. So there was, and my photograph, my everything. Tanishka, Tanishka, I'm in trouble. Can you just send me some money? What? So, really? So Medha also got it. So, um, yeah. But we'll check, Ravinder. Mail me abhinandansekri at gmail.com. Julian says, Neom Chomsky <laughs> expressed in 2023 that it was misguided to convene the G20 meeting in what he described as occupied and brutalized region of Jammu and Kashmir, raising concerns about the moral stance of the grouping in holding such an event in a region marked by suffering. Should India consider its pursuit of Kashmir given the ongoing suffering of its people while the efforts yield little practical outcome? The comparison drawn between India's handling of Kashmir and Israel's occupation suggests troubling parallel with reports indicating a better situation in Azad Kashmir compared to Jammu and Kashmir. Can you learn? I don't know if this no, that's not Neom true. Chomsky thing. I, also, it wasn't held in Jammu and Kashmir. Maybe like there were some uh, MPs who went there and some groupings that I, they, went they there. They had but, a tour that yeah, went that there went. and they were saying that's normalized. So, Julian, A, I disagree that the situation in Azad Kashmir is better than Jammu and Kashmir. There is absolutely no... Um, what do you call uh, economic activity that happened in Ladat Kashmir that's worth speaking about. I also, it's Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, guys, please. Oh, that's what Let they call it, right? That. Cause, cause, no, but even, Azad. <laughs> even there, they have different versions of how they call it. <laughs> yeah. So, the yeah, it's P-O-K. -okay. It's, P -okay. it's, we call it P-O-K. -okay. Yeah, <laughs> India calls it P-O-K. -okay. In Pakistan, depending on who's they, talking, yeah. they can call it Azad, yeah. they can call it P-O, whatever. The Kashmir in India is India, they call it India-occupied. So, now... Um, I can just tell you, A, I was in Lahore in 2006 or 7 or 8, I forget, for an event. It was a big event. And there were a lot of volunteers there who were doing a lot of major work. And they were just really excited. And so in the evening when we were sitting and chatting, I asked one of them, so where are you from? A young girl, she must have been in her, you know, early to mid-twenties. So she... Uh, said Kashmir I said oh and then I realized of course she doesn't mean my Kashmir you know mm. I said oh, okay and then she had this really sad smile on her face and she said this is the biggest thing that we look forward to other than this there's no event that I can actually so it's a no contest you know mm. I'm no fan of Mr. Modi Shaw forget this government just the way successive governments have treated Jammu and Kashmir. It has been extremely unfortunate right from, mm. you know, the senior Mr. Abdullah being tossed in jail to subverting elections. But in critiquing or criticizing that, I don't think anyone should be any illusion that the other side of Kashmir, economic activity is still more on this side in spite of all the shit that's happening. What we should be careful is that we do not become Pakistan because religious fanaticism is what took it to there where it is. But even today, 
unless you were drunk on religion like many people on both sides are from pure economic activity from e economic opportunities would you like to be that side or this side i think for any young person who's looking for a future in life they would want to be on this side it's i don't think it's even a you know also i don't think palestine israel and the problems in kashmir correlate. yeah that's yeah. very different okay prutul ravindranath hello abhinandan's glorification of us democracy is very annoying us has been a democracy for 250 years now and at least until 1960s there was mob lynching of minorities even today there are so called goon squads and kkk active over there he's so bent on giving the oldies the leniency towards their dogmatic behavior in lgbtq plus communities but not to indian democracy which is barely 100 years old listening to him makes it sound like it's the end of indian democracy i don't deny it's a threatening state but it's the case almost everywhere russia china us depending on who wins Indians have consist constantly protested injustice. Sometimes it works, 2011 protests, and sometimes it doesn't. Anti-CA protests. That doesn't mean that he uses his platform to make a generalized statement. Also, his example of Nikki Haley was wrong. Her base did abandon her. She lost the primaries in her own state, and not because her policies were any different from that of Trump's. It was because of Republican. It was because Republicans want Trump no matter what. As an avid subscriber, my request to Abhinandan is to kindly relax his negativity on Indian democracy. and glorification of the west stop glorifying the west q trump ko bhi to uh, uska approval rating kitna hai more than biden hmm. so we should not look up to them okay sid so now how many chap <laughs> replaces words look up to everything you know you are he say you are glorifying it so let him say what great. he wants man I, i'll just i will dig my heels on this prathul a it is not jaise the democracy or achar mein fark hota hai that this is 100 years old this is 100 years old so then because they invented the internet 20 years before us we should come to internet 20 years later like so we should there are certain things that are not how old it is a concept of democracy once it starts spreading in the world it spreads at a way way faster than others and values for example north korea is not a democracy does that mean we will be okay with let's say they became a democracy today that for the next 10 years Uh, you know s- slavery should be there i mean they've heard of what's happening the world over right so this they are 250 years old i understand that that is a robust you know argument for our institutions aren't that strong but to say that 60 years it will take us 250 years to get there then i mean if 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 that is the unitary method one applies to everything then we will be far away on everything mm-hmm. <laughs> it will be we'll be 200 and uh No, Haley's base did not abandon her. The Republican Party's base prefers Trump. Haley's base still stuck on to Haley. She did not get zero votes. What I'm saying is, she Trump has taken over the Republican Party. But can Haley switch to the Democrats today? I mean, I guess you understand what I'm saying. Can you do a complete 180 degree in a society like that? Could could today? Corbyn become a, uh, uh, a part of the government. There's no chance. Could Sunak say, you know what, I'll become Labour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But here it can happen. Look at Navin Jindal. No, in India, it, it, anything so, can happen. So I mean, you give me an example of where it can happen. I'll. This election is an election of turncoats. So it's not We're like doing a series. Nikki Haley no. abandoned her. Has she joined the Democrats? And do you think she can? Just answer that question. So and and I'm extremely optimistic. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be doing the job I'm doing. I'm fighting every day. I got one more IT notice day before yesterday. While we are recording this, tomorrow is my hearing in the High Court. I would not be fighting if I didn't believe in our country. But I am not one of those who say, "Oh, wonderful, wonderful! Look how shit they are." <laughs> uh, our institutions in our country are a different level. We have of, gone down. Uh, yeah, and it has nothing to do with how old our democracy is. It is the mindset of people which comes from caste system. we give in to authority like that and that's the problem comrade shepherd says on the discussion of the indian mentality it seems prashant kishore is really optimistic about us indians and our revolutionary spirit whereas ravish kumar is getting cynical day by day like me it would be a treat if you could get the both of them for an interview can you do a segment on anti defection laws and how they could could or could not apply to hostile takeovers of state governments and states it seems my state himachal is getting ready to be taken over and can you explain why in himachal it seems like everyone has a farm land and sustain themselves whereas in punjab up bihar etc it's not the case is that the case in himachal 
post zamindari abolition as far as a well off compared to other states in this matter why not hmm. sure if everyone in himachal has I mean, I the apple orchards, of course, are pretty. I, I mean, I. It's a belt. Orchard, you cannot buy that. It's land. a belt, and yeah, but it's a small a state also. Yeah, UP says. You can buy a flat, land. but you can't buy agricultural. Uh, agricultural. I mean, that agricultural land will be there. The land will be orchards and all. I mean, I don't know what the data says, but purely from you know having travelled extensively in many of these states, he's right that you meet people who would appear to be in socio-economic bracket C. बट दे वुड से हाँ हमारा एक बाग है एंड आई एम लाइक डूड मेरा तो सला एक अपार्टमेंट भी नहीं है तेरा बाग है सो यू नो वट आई एम सेट ऑन दैट आई थिंक इज राइट पहाड़ी पीपल हैव लैंड एंड यू डोंट सी पॉवर्टी द डे यू द वे यू डू इन राजस्थान और यूपी और बिहार और यू नो पंजाब इन द हिल्स इन उत्तराखंड इन हिमाचल दैट यू डोंट सी दैट poverty so i don't know whether they are well off i think himachal is better off though better uttarakhand off, is still yeah. quite poor and i think it's got to do with apple farming because it's just more lucrative so even if you have a small scale bag with just like six apple trees you are able to generate an income that you know you won't in others but that's purely because of apple i think and fruit hmm i don't think uttarakhand is uttarakhand garhwal areas can be very desperately poor really yeah even kumao regions mm. where there are ghost villages and people have left and there's really nothing for people to do but join army or yeah. drive a taxi uh, uh, right all right so if you have anything to say you can write into us at podcasts at newsline.com i repeat podcasts at newsline.com and support journalism and pay to keep news free on that note what are the recommendations raman sir you want to go first yeah there are three good uh, news arti- uh, articles one video the video is with the in news laundry uh, An- anmol pritam is back in our team and anmol pritam did a very good video 20 minute long video on jawaharlal nehru university elections he was he spent the entire night it's worth watching hmm. and especially the tadka in this were three musketeers who had come from delhi university hmm. and they said ye balak kisi kaam ke na hai ye ki balak पढ़ते रहते हैं वो सर सर सो दे हैव गिवन अ सर्टिफिकेट टू जे एन यू स्टूडियो इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग रिपोर्ट सो मस्ट वॉच देन देर वॉज वन फुल पेज आर्टिकल इन हिंदू लास्ट वीक द ड्रीम चेज हु गोट इंडक्टेड इन टू ए वॉर सो दिस इज अबाउट यू नो मैनी मुस्लिम्स एंड मैनी इंडियन मुस्लिम्स यू नो हु एंडेड अप गोइंग टू रशिया फॉर अ जॉब and now they are fighting for russia you know in, in this ukraine war so so i think there are uh, even mea had issued about 150 odd indians have gone to, recently have gone to russia so it's a story of those people uh, this uh, in this story hindu has met their family and uh, you know have uh, done a story on their socio uh, uh, economic status and why these people have Uh, had gone to russia and the third is a uh, very good uh, uh, the crime story and i had soft to bangalore police uh, it was an anchor in indian express how police tracked a baseball cap from cctv to key accused in bangalore cafe blast case wow it's a beautiful story in fact just one cap mm. and they identified the the criminal and and the story uh, you know gives uh, uh, reconstructs the entire uh, you know criminal act and how the bangalore police you know caught this guy so good story uh, in the inner express so um my recommendation would be a all the project electoral bond stories that we've done with news minute scroll independent journalists and orf i quite liked uh, rajkamal jha's speech at the ramnath goenka award i don't know if you guys have seen it but you should i was there you, you were there and please tell us kali puri and arun puri were also there <laughs> you haven't seen I the really, new scenes i really liked the pot shot he subtle pot shot he took at the media that is uh, itna bend ho gaya that it hurts uh, mm. right, so was. i i thought it was a good speech so you should watch that and of course watch new scenes if you haven't because you talk about it yeah i talk about it Did you mention Kalipuri and Arun? Of course, Kuri? it was did, all about. Did the camera pan to them? It was all. It was, it was all about India Day conclave as opposed to the Ramnath Goenka. The contrast in the two events. Yeah, stark. Couldn't have been yeah. starker. 
and uh, yeah i was in dehradun and uh, tradition is to read ruskin bond in dehradun so i <laughs> read his book the many joys of living a good long life which i think is very nice if you're scared of old age then you should read it because it can be very fruitful old age if you read his book so in lot fact of time lot of good things to so do so it's a, it's a good thing you were reading you know ruskin bond because so many people wrote in saying that this is such a heavy news couple of weeks mm-hmm. electoral bond issues out election been announced where's manisha i hope she's working because our you know subscribers manish are paying she should be working now i couldn't say that she is reading ruskin on leave bond for two weeks <laughs> i suggest she's working on bond so it wasn't oh, a lie reading you know? bond. Uh, it wasn't a lie <laughs> Please, I worked throughout the year. Okay, <laughs> I deserve. Now you're gonna get letters. Yeah, you, last time also you got letters. Ki don't shame her for taking leave. Don't shame. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I completely agree. No, no, leave as much as I personally believe. People who don't take leave have compromised decision making ability, and people who don't get enough sleep have compromised decision making ability, and people who work too hard have compromised decision making ability. Which is why we have decisions like demonetization. We have decisions like. <laughs> Dude, if you don't don't work eighteen hours a day, work eight. Please sleep eight yeah, hours a day. Yeah, but work those leave. eight hours. <laughs> this is your experience with our prime minister, or what? So he this works is my experience 20... in life. Yeah, so very subtle. Someone says he works twenty six hours in in a day, huh? <laughs> Not twenty four hours. I've been there. Yeah, when you are young, luckily, I was never given a task where I had to take a decision, right? As production assistants, as researchers during elections, our tasks were very basic. Make get make sure Vagela makes it from the entry of the gate to where your correspondent or them Hurkar, who's now election information commissioner, he'll be interviewed without the public beating him up. That was my job. So there's it's not complicated. So I was making sure because Vagela just flipped at that time. No, <laughs> these are the kind of tasks you were given. So you could stay up two three nights and accomplish. By by the fourth day, I was not sure whether I am standing, whether I am, you know. We've been there, you know. Hmm. Now imagine if I had to take those important decisions, and I was in that condition. I would, I would do do my demonetization only. No, no. In our profession, the reporters are mostly uh, in that condition. Know, are they play in that condition? They are. Because the the our our profession is such, hmm. and uh, you know the teams are not very big. So which way they should not become PMs. Otherwise, they will. Be <laughs> Although reporting, I think uh, the desk needs to be well rested. You can't edit a copy without uh, yeah, yeah. having think, yeah, slept. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. yeah that's why we have five days I, a week. Yeah. Or oh, there is somebody, sir. Na, you can. Uh, you. I mean, as a corollary, you can uh, report drunk, but you can never edit drunk. Edit drunk. Always be sober when you are editing. Oh, you have to. <laughs> Not know. to say that you should get drunk and report, but uh, but, I, I but I they are know. two you know, different. People tell me that. <laughs> For IIT preparation, people drink and study. It registers more. Even I'm like, I've never. I was like, I don't know nah, which, nah. what, how your brain. I've never I can't heard be, this. I've, I've, it's, Even the it's old school possible. editors, these stories about having old monk in the office and smoking. I can't understand how they were doing it. Like they must be geniuses. I, do, like, I don't see how you. How thing. can you be drinking no, no, and writing and smoking? I, it used to happen during Vinod Mehta's time. Uh, you know, having your vodka and coffee uh, in the newsroom, but but uh, not. Not uh, you know so randomly. Sometimes it used <laughs> to happen, but yes, uh, they used to. We used to romanticize it. Arey, sir, I've heard but these. But when you're working, you can't. I can't these, even smoke. These engineering yeah. colleges guys claim that when they smoke up and study, nah, nah. it registers more. I was like, uh, nah, like nah, how? Nah. How is? Nah, nah, this I is bullshit. I don't understand how all this works. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> so, my recommendation for the any more by the way, Manisha. No, that's it. So my recommendation for the week is this new podcast I've discovered, and I'm I love it. I keep going back to it. Uh, this week they had one episode on the curse of the world's fastest growing economy, which is the Guyana economy, which is a country in South America, right up up north. Uh, it it um, what do you call borders Venezuela and I think Brazil, if I'm not wrong. So it has struck oil in twenty two thousand fourteen or two thousand fifteen, and ever since it struck oil. It's the world's fastest growing economy. Mm. Like Exxon is there, everybody. That entire we are abandoning fossil fuels, and and these guys also bloody chandi okay. Venezuela suddenly has said, oh, you know, we own so much land there, <laughs> so they are getting, they are building their army bases, uh, and it's an interesting thing of, you know, that Joko. If there's oil there, America is interested. If there's oil here, this is what happens. It is 
playing out in real time hmm. and i think it's a fascinating story of uh, a country and also india is not the world's fastest growing economy <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> it is a rather worrying country which i don't know which way is going to go so that's not <clears throat> in itself enough on that note i'd like to thank our producer aryan and our sound recorder naresh uh, and thank you manisha and raman sir thank you thank you and uh, do you think we should say bye bye with an amma subalakshmi song or a carnatic music song uh, i only know let's see how many of our audience can tell the difference here <laughs> goes <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>